Welcome to a special Three Men in the Blog panel debate. Um, today we have three special guests. We'll start with uh, Duncan Hollisall on the left. Welcome, Duncan. Thank you. You're representing the Labour Party and the Better Together campaign. Am I? Good grief. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Kerry Williamson of many, uh, many things, but press, perhaps best known for Bella Caledonia. Kev, you rep represent the Yes campaign, I would say, because you're on the board of uh, Scottish Independence Convention, is it? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I represent them. So. You don't know who you represent. But certainly you have that point of view. I'll speak for that process. Uh, Ian McGill, Chair of the Edinburgh North and Leith Conservative Party. For the next, for the next month or two. Yeah. Month or two, <laughs> maybe not too long. Yeah. And Norrie Stewart, a uh, political cartoonist who's consistently a Yes man. Only in terms of <laughs> this debate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we'll start with um, we'll start with Norris, seeing as he's kind of uh, used to being questioned. And I think we'll we'll start with some, uh, someone suggested. What is the positive case for yes, and what's the positive case for no? So if, as you're going to argue from yes, what is you know just a quick summary, not a long one, of the positive case for yes? It's not entirely positive. A lot of it is about what I don't think we can achieve if we stay with Westminster. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's going to be any progress on that, uh, social, on social policies at all. It hasn't happened. The Labour Party, which I have always voted for being a supporter of, I think has let us down. And we need a dramatic change to get a society that I believe would be more successful for everyone by being more equal. At the moment, the division between the bottom half and the top 5% is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you think an independent Scotland would be a cathartic Well, I think moment. it's a lot easier to walk into Hollywood and give them a kick in than it is to drive down at Westminster. You probably wouldn't get into Westminster. So nearer to home, the more chance we'll have of having genuine influence. Okay. Right. Uh, Ian, you know, without going on any longer than Norrie did, <laughs> <laughs> what's the positive case, the positive case for the, the, the union? positive case for the union is the great history we've had so far. So at any time, the union was formed 300 years ago because it suited all the parties to join yeah, that's together. The, that's we could have left, and we could have left any time over the last 300 right. years. And it's never suited us to do so because in Scotland we've never seen the benefits and believed the benefits were there and were worth the price because there is a, you know, there is a price to pay in the social thing. So this is the most successful union. Yeah, but can we, can, can, we, can, 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 Ian, can, we can, can we look ahead choice. rather than backwards? Can we look yeah. ahead at all? What, 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 what can we expect as a result of, a, let's say, a no vote? What, what positive things going to happen because uh, we end up with a no vote in 2014? Some of the positive things is we can get onto real issues that folks get upset about because we've had this dragged out seven years now as we've uh, been coming up to this never end up, I mean, the referendum, uh, and it's dominate the entire politics. Do you really, really think that if there's a no vote and it's quite tight, that the, 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 the idea of a Scottish independence is going to go away? Well, no, if it's tight, that'll carry on. I don't anticipate it being tight. I anticipate it being a fairly overwhelming, putting it to bed for a generation. And thank goodness. Uh, right. Because then we can get onto the issues. You know, we can get onto the poverty that we've got kicking around everywhere. We can get onto the NHS, which is failing. We can get onto our housing policies. We can get onto... The stuff that really makes a difference, because Scotland being independent or not. Well, they're obviously taking quite an opposite view to Norrie. Norrie believes that you know a big change like getting independence would have a big impact on social policy and you know what would happen. Holyrood can have a massive impact on social policy. Holyrood can do, you know has the powers to be making massive impacts on. Yeah, but I'm, know, I'm, but I'm talking about a constant, a constant reason why their time and their treasure on trying to break up the well, country maybe, instead of. Maybe Kevin's in favour of, of what kind of would support what, what Norrie just said. You know, that constitutional change, like suddenly having an independent Scotland, could be effective in, in improving things in Scotland. Would, that, would you take that position, Kevin? It's all about probabilities. I think, you know, this is something that worries me, is people saying it will be like this in independent Scotland. We don't know. We don't I mean, know. if I look at my diary for tomorrow, I know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to spend five hours with the kids and I've got them off at the nursery. Then we're now, but what about the variables? What happens if there's an accident? What happens if somebody gets ill? What if we go to hospital or a mechanical failure in the house or a flood? Blah, blah, blah. You don't know. There's no certainties in life for any individual or country. So what would you say would be positive if there was a yes? Uh, 
I think it's more likely that Scotland will become a more equal society. I think they'll have less injustice, it'll be more democratic. These are the probabilities, I think, compared to staying in the Union. And that's enough for me. It's not, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not a rigid ideological position. I, I just personally feel, based on, you know, what I see around me, smaller, I think smaller countries can cover themselves a little better, more democratically. And there is empirical evidence that social values in Scotland differ from those in England. You can see that from the makeup of the two parliaments and, and the okay. social action studies. So is there a possibility to call it Duncan, positive case. Social justice is, is my core positive case for, for the union. And it's because the union has delivered social justice across the UK. You see, I'm a big fan of devolution, and I know people don't like... I think people get a bit um, hysterical about it, but Margaret Curran keeps saying, and a lot of people said, if you vote for independence, devolution is dead, because the SNP don't get devolution. They don't get local politics. They've been centralising things for years. The whole notion of nationalism is a centralising... Uh, well, you've gone down the road of, uh, of Ian there. You've gone negative already. Right. I'm talking about social justice, though. I'm talking about achieving social justice, because the way you achieve social... One of the ways you achieve social justice is by uh, embedding democracy in our uh, institutions. And that involves devolving power locally. And that's why I think uh, we talk about devolution on a, on a national scale. We need to be talking about devolving the, the sorts of regional councils that we have now into local councils. And I think that's something that can happen. And what about, what about, would not happen what about devolution in kind of uh, conservative style, which is empowering even closer, they're much, they think much closer to the voter, but it's um, rather than down. It's de you're, you're still describing devolution. I, I'm talking about collective action as opposed yeah. to individual, as opposed to the class. Would you go as far as a federal structure for these islands? I would, I'm, I'm not, I, I wouldn't mind a federal structure if we could work it out. But I, I, I'm not, I don't think that there's a problem on our top level democracy. I think we have to, the, there's a lot of reform that can be done in Westminster, but where there's a real issue to be solved is at local demographic level. And, and I think the day, one of the dangers with independence is people are seeing it as this is, you know, something must be done, this is something, therefore it must be done. And actually, independence doesn't solve that democracy issue. In many ways, it takes it away, it, it, it breaks it. So social justice, I think, is achieved um, by people. Okay. Well, we've warmed up a bit. We've got some got going a little bit in that sense of it. No. I'm not mind. Time for another couple of questions in this part. Um, identity. One of the issues, of course, has been much discussed. There's a question of identity. Um, I noticed, for example, that um, Duncan's got an English accent. I'm an Anglophile, very fond of the place myself. All my, all my, all my grandchildren are English. So, you know, and, and identity is a big, is partly a big issue. But I think from, from ask you, Kevin, first. I mean, a lot of the. The unionists are very keen to say that uh, they would lose their identity. They, in fact, it seems to be a hot button issue for personal unionist friends of mine. Oh, I don't want to lose the fact that I'm British on the BBC. How do you see that after a yes vote? Would, they, would these people lose their British identity? It depends. If you feel British, then you can say, you can say what you want. You might, you might lose your British passport. But your identity is not your passport. I, I think, no. judging by the Irish precedent, I think you could have both. <laughs> yeah, possible. I don't know. I think it's a red herring because I think what we're talking about is uh, a constitutional democratic change. We're not voting on our identity. We're voting on a constitutional change. Mm. So therefore, you know, the people who are voting, as far as I know, it's, I think it's nine, maybe ten percent of the whole population in Scotland is English. So I mean. It can't be a vote on identity. You know, this is a this is a multinational country, a mongrel nation. Identity is it's very interesting. You know, it's a very interesting subject. How we get, who how our identity is developed, but it's not what's going to, this this is going to be fought on. This will be fought on democracy. Where's the, where's the best democracy? Where's the best place? Well, is it a government from London or government from Edinburgh? And I would imagine that will probably be the, when it's boiled down to the, the reader of the Daily Record or the Sun. That's about all they'll be thinking about. Where is the government going to be coming from, Edinburgh or London? Ian, you're, uh, you're, I mean, you're, your party is, is frequently seen as an English party these days. Well, no, that's not because yeah. there are no Tories in Scotland. You yeah, obviously yeah, represent Tories. 
it's convenient for some folks. It's convenient for some folks to paint us in that way. But you know, con consistently we're getting about four hundred thousand Scots voting Conservatives. You know, we've got. I'm sure but after piece, Independence, you know, we still have Tories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The way the radical Independence movement tried to tell me the other day it would be a Tory free Scotland. They couldn't tell me where they couldn't tell me where the four hundred thousand of us were going to go. Uh, but uh, when it comes to when it comes to identity. I think that makes me angry, I was going to say makes me sad, but makes me angry is uh, the way certain, certain people have tried to paint what your Scottish identity should be. So I'm fiercely Scottish, I'm fiercely British, but just because I'm fiercely Scottish does not mean that I'm going to be voting yes, so I'm, could, I'm not. But, but, but you I don't do see it as an issue? I, do you not I, think an identity is going to be an issue? No, I think it might be, but you know, I get really... Up, Say angry at the moment, you know. For instance, I've stopped enjoying going away supporting Scotland football team now because uh, the sort of tartan army pushing, let's be Scotland, you know, let's be free, let's go and let's boo the national anthem when we're playing England or Northern Ireland or even Liechtenstein because it sounds like God save the Queen. Let's be political Scottish identity stuff. I'm going, that's no, I'm as Scottish as you guys, but I'm not going to boo Liechtenstein because their national anthem sounds like God Save the no, Queen. It does sound like <laughs> Mickey Mouse, but yeah. Yeah, but you know, that politicising of the Scottish identity and the sort of trying to claim that for one side of this debate. Well, Norris is really a good example of a man who's sort of Scottish. He's not even born here. No, my father had to leave Scotland for work because there wasn't any work. I was born in Bahrain. Um, and maybe kind of uniquely at the table. When I came back to the UK, I was treated as a foreigner. When I came back to Somerset, and basically I had a mid-Atlantic American accent when I arrived, and I was picked on by everybody. When I came to Scotland, I was thought to be English because I didn't sound Scottish, although I sounded American. <laughs> so I picked on by Scots. So it, it's never... The identity thing, it, it was quite strange. Alistair Darling came out with one of his really silly statements about your family becoming foreigners. Ah, that might, uh, did annoy me, now, I, personally. I, I don't know if Alistair's got anybody in his family who is a foreigner, who comes from mm. somewhere other than the UK. I've got a sister-in-law from Spain. Now, when she married into the family, she became family. She ceased to be a foreigner, because on the scale of things, family's first. Do I feel British? No. Have I ever felt British? No. I haven't, but that might be unique to my circumstances. I've always felt Scottish. My parents are Scottish. I had Burns quoted at me. I had a kilt at four years old, you know. So I've always thought of myself as Scottish. Do I have a problem with any other part of the UK? No. I have family all over the UK and all over the world. Well, look, Duncan, you're the, the man with the accent in, that's slightly different in the room. Um, <laughs> What do you feel about this question of identity? Is it, an, is it going to be an issue? Is it, is it an issue? Um, I hope accents aren't going to be an issue. I've actually lived in Scotland longer than I lived in England. And um, my parents moved from Edinburgh to Stoke before I was born. But uh, my two eldest brothers were born in Scotland and now live in England. Um, myself and my next up brother were born in England and now live in Scotland. I think um, that's probably pretty typical, we're all a bit, a bit like that. Exactly, and so the, the question of my accent I think is pretty irrelevant, I hope it's pretty irrelevant, but it is, it's interesting that, that this, this stuff doesn't go away, this uh, you're not a real Scot does not go away, and there's, there's that unpleasant underbelly um, in, the, in the debate that we, we all sides need to uh, try to counter. Um, because it is a political decision that we're making. It's not, we're not choosing a family. We're not, it, this isn't about, you know, who your mum and dad were or where you were born. It's about politics and it's about the constitution. And, and you have an opinion and if you're registered to vote in Scotland then you're able to express it. Full stop as far as I'm concerned. I, I think, I use the wrong word, let me put it this way. When you go to war, you don't go to war for politics. You don't fight for your queen and country, you fight for the guy standing next to you. It's an emotion that drives you forward. Okay, we're in a war no, no, analogy, no, what, army. <coughs> what I'm saying is, this idea that it's about nationality and not about family, you're missing the point. It's about, it about nationality. 
Well, it's, it's about the politics and nationality. But yeah, the, the issue of nationality is where it becomes a problem because that is a whole family thing. Okay, leave it with family. Because it, everybody it, can understand that. But it's not about family. It is. It's about the future for my kids. It's about the future for my grandchildren. But you can change the future for your kids by voting a different way. No, so I can't. You don't, you don't change it by changing no, the I constitution. Can't. It's All right, come on, you guys are getting it's slightly dead, and, and let's get yeah, some, some of the say. Emotional pitch, I think, is actually one of the weakest arguments that I hear when it comes to the independence debate. Why do, you, why, why do you want an independent Scotland? I want a better future for my kids. And do you know, what is that? Everyone want, I've not got any kids, I want a better future for everybody's kids. Is that, that unless, you know, is that you negated because you trust no, because you've no. got kids, oh, I've got kids, I want a better the, future. The problem is, I've you voted know, consistently since I could for essentially the situation to carry on as it is. I voted Labour, who promised all sorts of things and delivered nothing. I've never right. voted Tory because they have delivered what they promised and are doing it now. And I don't like it. What I want is a smaller unit answerable more immediately to me. And I don't disagree with taking your, your democracy down as low as you can, but Labour haven't delivered that, so, and they're not going to. Hang on, who are you going to vote for in an independence vote? I'll probably vote SNP at the next election. Right, because you like their policies, because you. Because Please tell me it's because you like your, their policies. Because they've delivered on policies that I like. Well, they have stolen the Labour Party policies oh, okay. in the last few years. So you will be voting on the basis of policy, yeah? Yes. So that is how you change your children's future. But staying in the union won't change my children's future. We'll get more of the same. Hang on, you say you voted Labour all your life. That means yeah. you voted for the UK government in four out of the last five yeah. elections. And they didn't so do what they promised to do. Okay, so with one on one in Scotland, they, tax the government will do what they promised. Is that what you're telling me? No, but that's what I'm hoping. I can't guarantee anything so, any more than you can. So what's the basis can you of this guarantee, plan? Can you guarantee me that Labour will deliver on their manifesto? And, 2016. I can't guarantee you anything. Exactly. But right now, I have to say, gentlemen, it's, it's, it looks highly unlikely following the, the article by Mr. Wilson this morning. Yes, Kevin. There's another factor that comes into play here, and it's one that's not often discussed, is that uh, Scotland has a chance to create a new democracy. I think that's where I would come from. It's a 21st century democracy. What we have in Westminster, it's not even really 20th century until you get rid of the House of Commons mm. and Especially the House of Lords. Etc. I mean, the House of Commons is a... Sorry, the House of Lords. The House of Lords is a, a very strange thing, even in European democracy, to have this unelected body. Some of them are bishops mm -hmm. who get a place in government. You know, this is a partial theocracy we have. It's like just like to be specific, but... But you know, the, the, mm. House of, the House of Lords, this is not even a fully formed democracy. What's happened is Westminster has become, uh, it's become ossified, if you want. It's become a, a, a form of government that, that's not able to respond to the needs of the people or even to the needs of the political parties within it. Because what's happened over the last, I would say over the last 30, 40 years, is that the government itself has been corrupted by its own structures. It's become enmeshed with the corporations, with the banks and, and the media, and the national media. We've seen this in the Levison inquiry, we've seen it in the banking disaster of 2008 onwards. We, we've, we've seen a corporatocracy, you know, it's not a genuine democracy. Now, I'm not saying that can't be reformed, because it has to be. You know, otherwise England and Wales are never going to be have a democracy, a genuine democracy. But for me, we've got a chance to say to build something that's different, where government we're going to create a new democracy, where government isn't fused with the banks, it isn't fused with the, the national corporate media, it isn't fused with big business. It has a chance to do that now, like we're talking about probabilities. That's not guaranteed either. But it, it seems but to me that it's worth, it seems to me it's worth asking Duncan's opinion on that because most of what you've just said. Duncan will turn around and probably say, the Labour Party can deliver that. I, I wasn't going to say that. No? But actually, what I was going to say, I mean, I would hope, yes, that the Labour Party could deliver that. <coughs> but what I was going to say was, um, I want to reform democracy, but I want to do it for everybody in the UK. I don't want to walk away from the vast majority of people who are affected by that. I don't see walking away as solving any of those problems. You can't just cut off a wee bit and say, we can do it better here, because as soon as you get structural problems in your wee bit, you'll want to cut off another wee bit at the top. It's, it's not how you solve problems. I want to get into Westminster, I want to you know, win the argument on Trident, win the argument on 
vote reform and, and actually do the politics in the UK. And but it, could be, it could create a crisis, Scotland breaking out of the British state. I think it could create a, a crisis where people actually have to think about Westminster because if people in England and Wales see our democracy developing in a much more progressive way, mm. they're going to start thinking, well, can, I, we want can, I, can, I, can I throw in a, a, probably a hero of most of us, Billy Bragg, a great folk singer and good spokesman for the people. He's a great supporter of Scottish independence on the basis of kind of what the, the argument that Kevin's making. There's really little difference between the argument that Kevin's making and Duncan's making, except that the, that the conclusion is, is different. Based on, I would say, to some extent, your view, Duncan, is rather utopian, given that the history has not proved that the Labour Party delivers very much these days. That's an odd, that's an odd argument, I guess. I'm not, I think that the whole, you're talking about a utopian argument. I mean, that, this is the basis of that part of the discussion, is Scotland could become what we want it to be, the idea of democracy. Uh, and all I'm saying is, UK could become the ideal democracy as well. And I care also about the 60 million people, not just the five. But, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm have to say, I, so do I. I care very much because, as I say, my family is growing in England, and, and, and I have more relatives in England, and not just close relatives. I've got God, so many in-laws, and I'm very, I'm, I just don't. I can see it shaking up English politics uh, in a positive way if we get a yes vote in Scotland. I can see that. The, the, the liberal in the, with a small L and the left in the south of England, which is kind of ossified at the moment outside London, suddenly realising that we don't have to put up with this. I was actually pre I've only voted Tory once, only once, and it, 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 it was. Do you know how? Do you know how backward this place was? A parish council. I voted for the Tory because he wanted to kick out the Lord of the Manor. It was still. It was the bourgeois revolution. It was still going on. I can't believe he kicked out the poor Lord of the Manor. Uh, terrible. He lost. He lost. Damn those revolutionary Tories. Eh? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's the Again, yeah, the whole thing, the whole thing's utopia and I'd be dunking and wanting and having a, yeah, wanting a bigger positive future for the whole of the UK. But again, I am interested that the way the yes and no get themselves painted in, so you you know, yes, we really want to be saying, yeah, we're talking for the real Scots, you know, we're the authentic Scottish voice, and they know they're the authentic voice of England, but of course there's a whole lot of folk down, uh, you know, these are the English parties trying to tell us what to do, this is London trying to impose their will on us, uh, and of course there are many people down down south in Englandshire who would love Scotland to become independent, they would see Scotland, they would say, have lots of different reasons for that, uh, whether they're, whether they're true or not, but there are many doubts. Some of them might be quite negative. Some of them might be quite negative. Some of them might be quite positive. Some would argue. Uh, some some would argue that it would ensure a conservative government forever in England. When well, we've heard that story many times. When Labour right. sixty MPs are, uh, you know, the block vote, the block Scottish vote in uh, Westminster uh, for Labour there, uh, and that's taken out of the equation. It would secure uh, a right wing, a set of right future for. England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and that's got to be an attractive idea for many. Uh, we also say, say when we say, you know, and doesn't add up <clears throat> historically. Isn't it? Oh, I know, yeah, I know. I'm just like, bogus, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm saying there are many, there are many arguments that mm. people down south would say and use. You know, they would say, "Great, we're not going to have to foot the benefit bill for the whole of Glasgow. Then we're not going to have to foot the benefit bill. We're not going to have to subsidise postal services around the more remote areas, so there'd actually be more money for England." They would argue. So you know. The, the idea that the whole of England, the whole of the UK is saying, no, stay, stay together, isn't also true. Yeah. 